I worked in the jail for many years. I had a young man there who, he would wake up with his father beating him. He had such a bitterness, such a hatred toward his father, and then he would have these nightmares. As a child, I had been hurt quite a bit. I had seen abuse within my home. And I asked him, how long has it been since you've seen your father? And he said, oh, he died seven years ago in prison. And I said, he's gone and he's still destroying your life. The Holy Spirit really worked in my heart to understand that I needed to forgive my dad. When I went back, he came in the room and he shouted, it works. At times in life, we encounter situations that are beyond our control. Some of these situations involve a great deal of pain, where emotional wounds are inflicted upon us by another person. What are we supposed to do in such situations? How are we to respond when someone treats us in a way that results in emotional pain? Apart from an act of God, there is one primary response we will have when hurt by someone else, and that is the response of bitterness. As a child, I had been hurt quite a bit. I had seen abuse within my home and uh, uh, physically and emotionally abused as well. I worked in the jail for many years. I had a, a young man there who told me that he had nightmares. Every night he experienced nightmares. His father would come home drunk many nights and come in and he would wake up with his father beating him. He had such a bitterness, such a hatred toward his father, and then he would have these nightmares. I had a lot of bitterness toward him and a lot of hurt, and I realized that was really just another form of bitterness, the hurt. Although bitterness seems like the deserved response towards those who have wronged us, there's something dangerous about it that we often fail to recognize. Bitterness is a corrosive agent that damages not our offender, but our very own soul. And if its destructive presence is permitted to stay, it begins to characterize our very existence, where our life becomes defined by those we despise. I ask him, how long has it been since, you, um, since you've seen your father? And he said, oh, he died seven years ago in prison. And I said, he's gone and he's still destroying your life. Although bitterness may seem like the best response when we have been hurt by someone else, it ends up doing far more damage to us than the original offense ever could. But what is the alternative? Are we just supposed to pretend the offenses committed against us never happened? Do we just quote, forgive and forget? Bitterness is a spiritual infection that often seeps deep into our soul, and no superficial remedy will cure us of it. But what is the answer for this problem? The solution for bitterness is twofold. The first part involves an interaction with God, and the second part involves our response towards offenders. In relation to God, there is something we desperately need from Him in order for bitterness to not dominate our lives. In Hebrews 12.15 it says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. To overcome the detrimental effects of bitterness, we must have grace, and that grace is only found in one place. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. If we want grace, we must look to God for it, coming to His throne to receive it. But notice how we are supposed to come to the throne boldly. This word boldly in the Greek is very interesting. It implies assurance, but the actual meaning of the word is, quote, all out spokenness. When Scripture calls us to come to God's throne boldly, it could involve verbalizing to God what is going on in our heart, all out spokenness. When someone offends us, our natural tendency is to go and tell others about our grievance. And while we may feel better after we vent, the problem didn't diminish. It actually increased. We just became a conduit for defilement to spread, like what is talked about in Hebrews 12.15. The answer is not venting our bitterness to others, but neither is stuffing it. God calls for a verbalizing of the struggle in our heart, an all-out spokenness, but that communication is called to be with God at His throne. The psalmist gives repeated examples of this, such as in Psalm 94. In verse 3 he says, Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? 
We can see him expressing his inward struggle with what evildoers were getting away with. But it doesn't stop with the psalmist's frustration. By the time we get to verse 18, the psalmist pens these words, When I said, My foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. It was in God that the psalmist found his help. When we are battling inward pain because of what someone else said or did, instead of becoming bitter, God calls us to come to his throne, to be open and honest with him about our struggle, and then receive his grace for the need. Strong's Concordance defines grace as graciousness, especially the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in the life. Grace is something of God that enters into us and empowers a change in the way we live. And this is exactly what we need when someone has offended us. We need God's divine inflowing and empowerment to respond His way. This brings us to the second part of the solution for bitterness. In relation to our offenders, God calls us to forgive them. This does not mean acquitting them if they have violated the law. If crimes have been committed, civil authorities must be notified. But as far as our personal response is concerned, God calls us to emotionally release our offenders, granting them forgiveness for the ways they have personally offended us. And when we receive God's grace to forgive, it is genuinely amazing the sense of freedom and joy God is able to bring to our soul. So we went through the principle of, of forgiving others, and God has called us to forgive others. The Holy Spirit really worked in my heart to understand that I needed to forgive my dad. When I went back, he came in the room and he shouted, it works. He said, I haven't had a nightmare since I forgave my father. And so I was able to contact him and forgive him and tell him that all the things that he said to me and the ways that he had hurt me, that I completely release him from those things. And it, it changed him. I saw him probably 10 months or a year later. And I went into this car wash and he came up and he said, it's still working. 